parish. <laughs> so um, when we moved and uh, then my parents, grandparents moved, I, I'm not sure who really was left in that parish. So that, that's kind of interesting. We go back on um, some weekends to visit them. But, um, you know, I find it interesting because that road, Church Road, was off of the road I grew up on. And that road that we grew up on was called Sillyville Road. And I said, that's why I'm a youth minister today is uh, like Sillyville. I'm kind of silly. All right. Well, yeah. Um, I grew up in a family that made a lot of different um, businesses throughout the things, and we um, succeeded through making, I didn't really succeed making businesses, but uh, my family were were very renowned for starting businesses, and um, the businesses they started became very fruitful. So they had a lot of expectations for me as I was growing up that I would go to college, that I would do great things, that I would join the family business, or I would you know, pass on and be a doctor, a lawyer, or something very prestigious. And of course, I told them that, right? How many of you have had different things in your life that you thought you would be other than sitting here doing church work? (laughs) Yeah, right? I thought so. So um, as I was going through my college days, I started out as a chemist with uh, pre-med intentions for two years. And You know, as I got a D for being dumb in uh, biology, I said, all right, this is not meant for me. And um, I transitioned because I knew I loved religion. So I transitioned over into religion and uh, became um, fascinated with my, uh, while I was at Fairfield, fascinated with religion. And uh, I told my parents I was there because of the ethics. I could be a lawyer. I was going to be a lawyer. That's what I was going to do. It. All these people are getting into law school because, you know, with ethics, they were taking these people with religion background, with ethics, I was going to be a lawyer. Well, soon enough, I found out that I was driven to church and I was really going to be, well, a catechetical leader. <laughs> And when I told my mother that, my mother said, are you kidding me? You and your potty mouth, you're going to be a potty mouth minister. No way. And I said, that's just going to make me relatable, mom. (laughs) So um, I became a catechetical leader, and I went on for my master's degree. My mom still couldn't believe it all the way up until her dying day when I'm singing religious songs on her deathbed that I was a minister. She's shaking her head at me and dying, and I'm like, Yes, you're going to heaven, Mom. (laughs) Anyways, uh, I have a love and a passion for God and all things, and regardless of how crazy I am and insane I am, and I uh, love the Lord, and I love sharing my faith with others. And it has shown throughout my relationships. It has shown throughout um, what I do, and I hope to pass some of that on to you today. But I would like to get to know a little bit more about who you guys are, so... I'm going to start by asking you to stand up if this applies to you or stay seated if it doesn't apply to you. Yes, we need a little exercise in the morning. And you know what? You can use this too in your classrooms or your retreat or wherever you want. So let's get to know you, okay? If you actually work and get paid for the church, please stand. You ain't get paid. Okay. If you are a catechetical leader, stand. If you're a youth minister, please stand. You know, everybody should stay standing. Everybody should be ministering to the youth at all times. Yeah. If you love animals, stand. I loved your story. I heard about kissing cats this morning. If you love the mountain stand, (laughs) if you love the beach stand, yeah, if you hate coffee stand, that's me, I don't like coffee. (laughs) Hate coffee, I'm a tea drinker. Yeah, sorry. Sneaky, sneaky. If you hate boring lectures. 
if you hate boring lectures. <laughs> if you love eating out. <laughs> if you hate being waited on hand and foot. Yeah. <laughs> if you pray every day. You, I'm not telling you what to do. If you like this game. <laughs> okay, you can all take a seat. Thank you very much. I learned a lot about you guys. Very much in a very short period. Thank you. All right, so we're going to begin with some of the basics. I am not going to tell you exactly how to plan a retreat or anything, but I am going to go over some of the basics of how to plan a retreat. Because how many here have planned a retreat before in this room? Okay, so a lot of you have. How many of you have planned a retreat for grades that are not sacramental? Good, good. This is one of the things I'm going to tell you. I encourage you to start planning retreats for all grades, starting with, even if you start with kindergarten, start planning retreats for kindergarten. It doesn't have to be any longer than the classroom time. It could even be just a, a half the class time. It's the best thing because if you start planning retreats for those grades, once they get into middle school, they start looking forward to it. It's not, oh, I have to go on retreat for a whole day or, oh, I have to go on an overnight retreat. They start knowing what retreat is from a very early age and they look forward to it. It's the best thing you can do for them. So what to keep in mind when planning a retreat? Here we go. Number one, you need to put the work in. No worry, I will share my PowerPoint with you. You don't even need to write this down. Don't worry about it. I will share this. I will even give you lots of, you know, places to go to get some of the stuff that we're going to see, like links you can connect to and stuff like that. Don't even write any of this stuff down. Just, just listen. Liza, could you just check the, the room microphone? Sorry. I turned it off. Is this better? Yes. yes? Yes. Okay. It's not very loud, huh? Yeah, just keep, it, keep talking. <laughs> so with retreat, for those of you who have planned retreat, there is work involved for those of you who don't know. How much work is involved? I always... How much, uh, you know, a little kid does this? Right. How big is it? How much do you love me? It's never this much. How much is a retreat going to take to plan? This much. Exactly. Right. Number two, know your goals and create a theme. So if you know your goals, it becomes easier to create a theme. Better? I just have to yes. get up now. <laughs> <laughs> Yay! If you know your goals, you can create a theme. Goals and themes, very important. Logistics. You know, with the younger kids, don't even go outside of your church or your classroom or anything like that. You don't even have to worry about that. A church hall is a great place, but date, location, and time. Start publicizing that immediately. Put it on your church calendar, your church schedule, everything. And make sure the parents know that immediately. Like, I put that on my calendar at the beginning of the year so that parents can plan for that day. My, my kids in my program think of that as like a birthday party. It's like the best day of their lives, so they know not to miss that day. I have like the best attendance on retreat days. Um, recruit and train your volunteers. I will give you, there is um, one place. If you need help recruiting and training volunteers, there's this place called Thrive. Thrivers Wanted, has anybody heard of it? They are great, they're $35 a month. So if you're interested in a place that helps you to train and recruit and do things with volunteers, Thrive is a great place. And they give like unbelievable like <coughs> discounts on other things. They point you to great areas where you can do other things. And they'll give you one-on-one -on -one contact 
too. So if you're having trouble with your retreat or planning things, this is for youth ministry mostly. Youth ministry, so middle schools and high school thrive. Awesome. But training and recruit, recruiting your volunteers. Uh, figure out the components of your retreat, like prayer, activities, games, crafts, music. What are you going to use during that time? So plan out your retreat. What are those components going to be? Plan your snack if you're having one. Also, if you're having dinners, if you're having meals, what are those going to be? Make your schedule. Publicize your retreat. Social media, text, bulletin. Make sure you have your community praying for those people on retreat. It doesn't matter if it's first grade, second grade, third grade. You should ask your community to pray. Uh, how many times have we done, you know, the first communion kids, we have people take the slips of paper and pray for those. Well, why aren't we having the younger kids prayed for when they're on retreat too? So have slips of paper for the first graders. They're going on retreat this weekend. Have the community play, pray for those kids when they're on retreat too. Figure out if it's necessary to do registration. If it's done in-house, you don't need to do registration. But if it's out of house, you need to do it. During retreat, accompany your children during the retreat. Accompaniment. Accompaniment is the big key word. If you haven't heard it, has anybody not heard this word? No. Good. I'm glad your diocesan office is doing a thing. Accompaniment. If you're not joining your kids on retreat, then what are you doing? I, you know, fussing and mussing and going around and setting up tables, you shouldn't be doing that. You should be having fun and showing that you're interactive in the retreat that you're doing. It's just as much important that you're doing the retreat with your kids as it is to show your faith, to show that you're having fun, that you're enjoying the things, that you're doing the tasks that they're doing. Accompaniment is not just for middle school, it's for every grade to walk the journey with them, to do the task that you're asking them to do. So don't just give instructions and stand up here, but to sit there and actually do the task with them, to do the crafts. My kids love watching me do the crafts because I am worse at, worse at it than them. I am not kidding you. I made one of the um, marshmallow sheep today, and you can look at it, and you will laugh because I am not a crafty person. I'm not at all. We have an artist in our office and she has to do everything, but I will do it and they love laughing at me because I will do it with them every time and they go, oh, Miss Liza, I'm so much better than you. <laughs> I know, you probably are. And don't forget to evaluate what you do. You, you know, today we're evaluating how this is, but you can't necessarily have a, a first grader evaluate what you did, but you can sit there and talk to them about what they liked, what they didn't like, what's important. Those are things that you should do with every single grade. So evaluate what you did, what they liked, what they didn't like. And that way, next time you know how to plan a retreat better. And don't forget to pray before, after, during the whole time. Pray, pray, pray. Okay. Icebreakers. How many people have used icebreakers before, right? You know, they're some of the best things to do because most of the times they're going to be the most memorable things you're going to do, right? Exactly. So on your tables, I have already provided you one of the things we're going to do for an opening icebreaker. There's a piece of paper right there. And I want to get to know you guys even more better. I don't know if that's correct. In English, I was going to say more better, right? Much more better. See, even bad English is, you know, important. So take a piece of paper. I want you to put your name and the parish you work at or volunteer at. Okay? And then you're going to want write one question, introduction question, any question that you think someone you would like to answer. It could be anything, you know, like... What color eyes do you have? What's your favorite animal? Um, what if, what do you think the world would be like if Jesus didn't come? I mean, something crazy, but something interesting, okay? The one thing I will tell you, once you get to middle school, 
you might want to give a list of questions because you get some wacky questions. You do not want to just go. So I have a book that I do what if questions, OK? And I write a whole bunch of them down, and I'll project them up there. And I'll put them up there. And I'll say, pick one of these questions to ask, OK? So write your question and your name and your, your, um, your church, OK? And then write your question. I'll tell you what the next step is, OK? And I'm going to get a piece of paper, too. And don't forget where you're from, too, because how many St. Mary's are there, you know? Is everybody done? No. Does anybody need help? I have a book up here. <laughs> All right, for those of you who are done, I want you to crinkle it up. <laughs> yes. I'm Jesus. No, okay, you can throw it at me. <laughs> here, right here. Throw it at me. Right here, 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 right here. Good job. Wow. Woohoo. Woo, woo! Snowball fight in the middle of summer. Come on. Come on, come on, come on, come on. Come on, come on. Come on. Woohoo! Come on. Come on, come on, come on, come on. Woohoo! 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 Woo! Oh, come on, come on. It's more fun if you're moving back and forth. Oh, that's a good idea. It's like a video game. All right. Mario. This is 35 card pickup. The last one to throw there is, uh, has to pick them up now. All right. No, not really. Not really. Okay. Uh, all right. So I'll start off. What you're going to do is the person who's I announce stands up. Okay. So Mary Jane works for the diocese. OK, so I have to answer her question. What's your favorite flavor ice cream? That's a good one, Mary Jane. My favorite is Almond Joy. Mm. So Mary Jane, now you get to come and pick one of them off the floor. And oh, I like that. Right? OK. Is there, the big, song, never mind. Song, what would it be? Oh, that's a go one too. Send in the clowns. <laughs> 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 yeah. Favorite hobby? Quilting. 
<laughs> what do you like most about being a catechist? Uh, <laughs> I have a problem with that word. Um, working with the children, all ages, just teaching them about God. You know, knowing that I've taught them something valuable in their life that they can use in their life, that they can, you know, know much better. And have a closer relationship with. Sarah, if you could have dinner with one person, dead or alive, who would it be and why? <laughs> I guess I, I, I would really like to um, sit down and have a dinner and a conversation with many, many people, but if I had to only pick one, I think it would have to be Father Pedro Ogizi. He's a Jesuit who is now in the process of being considered for canonization, so he's a friend of God, so that's what I'd like to. He was very um, humble, he was very very sick for the last several years of his life, he couldn't speak because of his infirmities. And, uh, anyway, who was it, Father Pedro Aguzzi? I don't know. You, 
I'm going with you. Yeah. <laughs> if you could describe yourself with only an ice cream flavor, what would it be? <laughs> <laughs> That's good. Vanilla. Goes <laughs> <laughs> with everything. Oh. That's <laughs> 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 Jesus, one question, what would it be? Uh, someone went hard. Can you teach me how to walk on water? Ah! Kelly, <laughs> what's your favorite form of prayer? Hmm. Probably just the Our Father. Our Father. We use it a lot, and it's a good go-to. Oops, sorry. Sad. 
<laughs> it's been on my brain. I had to make big changes in food. Okay. Carl? Okay. If you could interview anyone, living or deceased, who would it be? Okay, well, it's going to be Jesus first. And I'm going to ask him if you will come with me to the beach and have a piece of pizza. Because I've always wanted that. Yep. <laughs> Having said that, then it would be. I think my parents, I just want to know how they're doing. And I know they're doing well, but I just, I just want to know. So, that's what I would do. Okay, thank you. <laughs> what is your favorite ice cream flavor and why? Um, I've never met an ice cream flavor I didn't like. <laughs> uh, yeah, I have, I have a problem. <laughs> <laughs> Lynn, did you not get a question? All right, Lynn, go up there. I'm going to give you a question. Lynn, what is your favorite activity? My favorite activity, water skiing. Really? In the summer. <laughs> <laughs> Hiking in the spring and fall and snow skiing in the winter. Wow. wow. Excellent. <laughs> Excellent. Thank you. Thank you all for sharing. That was great. So without cheating, without looking. Why did, what, what was it interesting or w how did that make you feel? Why was the icebreaker important? What do you think? 
Give me some interesting. Yeah. Get to know each other. Get to know each other. What else? It brings us together and it kind of breaks down those barriers of, oh, I don't know you yet. Yes, that awkwardness in the room. So you get to know each other and you break down the awkwardness. Yeah. You get to hear everybody's voice. You get to hear everybody's voice. Yes. Laugh, right. That's very important to laugh, to giggle, to hear people. Yeah. I just want to say, like, the unscrambling of papers and stuff that I do. So yes. Right. Mm-hmm. Yes. And isn't it really unstressful, too, to be able to whoo, snowball it, right? <laughs> exactly. So icebreakers are important because, number one, you know, Remember, it is the start. You get to know each other. You get rid of the awkward silence. So everything's up here. You get rid of the awkward silence. You get rid of that awkwardness of not knowing each other necessarily. You get to hear other people's voices. You get that blood flowing. So you're getting up. You're getting moving, kind of like that stand-up, sit-down game you know, that I was doing. And you get to know one another. But it, most importantly, you have fun. That's why I said, you know, icebreakers are really important because a lot of times the kids go home and they're going to remember those game things. But one of the things that I am going to tell you is icebreakers often are going to have things that lead you right into conversations about God and what you're talking about on your themes. Um, some of the games that I'm going to now not this one, but the next one, we'll, you'll see themes. So I'm going to give you another icebreaker that we're going to do right now that you're going to do at your table. We can help you do this. You don't have to do it. That's really funny. <laughs> That's really funny. <laughs> <laughs> Yes. So this is great for, so we did a, a crowd breaker, right? We've done a crowd breaker. Now this is to get to know your table. So say you mix up your tables or you mix up the kids and you want them to get to know each other at the table. So number one, do not hand out the M&M sheet. Yeah, <laughs> ever, all right? You have them, number one, pass the bowl around. Take as many M&Ms as you want. And some of the kids already know this game. So here's what I do. Take as many M&Ms as you want. And if they know this game, because you've done it before, all right, I'm an M&M fanatic, OK? And I know you guys know this game. So we're going to do the opposite. If you didn't take M&Ms, you have to do the opposite. So if you have one M&M or no M&Ms, you have to answer all of the questions. If you have a lot of M&Ms, you only have to answer one of them. So that's what you do. You do the exact opposite. If you find that your kids already know the game and they're like, oh, I'm not taking any, okay? So here's the deal. Take as many M&Ms as you would like and then answer the questions. Just do it as if you were playing like a normal potion. Just take a couple M&Ms and see what you come up with, and then everyone at the table is going to answer according to what they take, OK? Just tap them. You do not need to eat them. You can eat them later, OK? Yes, whatever colors you have. Ooh. Thank you. I have a lot of yellow. Oh, let's see. Green. I have no orange. Okay. Is that what we do? We put them in there? No, you don't have to. All right, so my favorite place to visit, seems like it's Mexico lately. <laughs> Most memorable and embarrassing moment? Yes. <laughs> yes, so whatever you take, yeah. you answer whatever. So if you have like three of these, then you have to, favorite place to visit, then answer like, tell your three favorite places to visit. No, 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 you oh, share it. You share it amongst yourselves. Oh, yeah, but we're not writing anything down. Three, 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 three
No, no. Like if I took three yellows, yeah, I'd take three. Cool. I'd tell you three of my favorite places. <laughs> okay. You know, if I took. No, no, it's just to share at your table. Do you want me to tell you my most embarrassing moment? So in college, I was at a at a, a dance club. And I was wearing a wraparound skirt with, you know, tights and stuff, and someone untied it and it dropped to the floor. That's me. What? I thought so myself. I don't know if it got untied, but I think someone untied it. My favorite hobbies is definitely my dog and my husband. He is a hobby. He is a hobby. Favorite foods? Anything sugary? Anything carbs, because I'm not allowed to eat them? And meat. <laughs> Basically all food. Oh, you have, to, you have to say how many games did you have that many times? And then, is there anything I choose? I love you all. Well, I have to add, I guess. I only said one movie. Wizard of Oz, I said. Uh, Romero. Oh, that's a good one, too. Stand by me. Oh, that's a good one. Oh, that's a good one too. Um, I said Cadillac Mountain, Prince Edward Island. Oh, that's a great place. And um, the flu in New Hampshire. <laughs> and my favorite food, I said, well, anything spicy. Oh, that's a good one too. I like spaghetti. Oh, yeah, that's a good one. <laughs> <laughs> I don't like that. Favorite hobby? <laughs> Favorite food? <laughs> Salad? <laughs> M&M. <laughs> right. Um, I think I need a couple more. Oops, sorry. I dropped them all. Favorite movie? Oh, that's a good one. Favorite place to visit? White Mountain. <laughs> <laughs> it could be most memorable. Most memorable? Yeah, be yeah. Oh, okay. Of course, it might kill me. Yeah, I was going to say that. <laughs> um, love watching Patriots with my boys. Um, love spending time with my expensive dogs. <laughs> Did, who won the Patriots game last night? Patriots. Yeah. Yes. That's great. Oh, they ended up hitting the field goal. Okay. That's great. Do you have the time instead of me leaving? I've never been. <laughs> you know, <laughs> it's a lot of answers. No, my wild candy. I have four candies. I love to I love your job. <laughs> I work with wonderful people. Mm. Good answer. <laughs> and, uh, I've, I've worked, I've done church ministry and I'm not sorry. Yeah. 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 Y
Oh, wow. Not, not one on one. That's still good. <laughs> I'll take it. Alright. Alright. Favorite hobbies playing the piano. Favorite food is lasagna. Favorite movie. I like My Fair Lady, but so when you got me thinking about musicals, I love um, Seven Brides for Seven Brothers. Um, most memorable moment was getting married. Uh, favorite place to visit, I'd have to say either Ireland or Alaska or Hawaii. And share something. I actually started my Catholic ministry at St. John's in Memphisville. No way! Yes, I did. Wow! I'm from Connecticut. Get out! It's right around the corner for me. Lori Brandstrom's now there. Wow! That's great. Neat. Cool. Thanks for sharing. What time is it? Okay. Okay. Oh my gosh. And I said, and that's why. Does anybody need more time? Yeah. Okay, no problem. Ha <laughs> ha I get that too. Done? Anybody else? Are we set to go? <laughs> Has everybody finished? Ding, ding, ding. Hello, hello, hello. I don't, know. I don't think the room one's working either. It keeps shutting off. Ladies and gentlemen, are we done? Still one more? Okay. It keeps shutting off on its own. I don't know why. I don't either. It's not a big room, so I got the camera one on. They need the back. They're done. <laughs> when you're doing icebreakers like introduction, one of the things you could relate this to is the call of the disciples, right? Because Jesus Christ had to introduce himself, right? To his disciples, he also had to get to know them as well, right? He didn't just sit down and go, hey, come follow me. At some point, he had to sit and recline with his people and get to know them. So he didn't just up and leave and never get to meet them, but you can also sit and talk, and he got to know his disciples. He knew who they were. He knew his people. He also knows each and every one of us. So you can also relate that to the fact that Jesus knows us, knows us individually, importantly. So when we talk about introductions, you can relate it to how Jesus Christ knows each and every one of us. And we need to also know each and every one of us has Christ in him. So to relate that in the introduction would be important too. Um, I have one more icebreaker, which is a really quick one, but I need volunteers to do this. It's a fun one, but it's really fun. Come on up here. If you want to do it, I'll take you all. Come on up. It's a minute to win it, fun one. 
It's a minute to win it fun one. I'll take y'all, anybody who wants to do it. Line up straight in front of my audience, please. And yes, it does involve Oreos, so please take your own cookie. You have? You know what we're doing, right? Payback. Yes, yes. Karma. Right, right. Thank you. <laughs> Minute to win it fun, right? So, the journey of faith cookie, we'll call it the journey of face cookie. <laughs> so, for this challenge, they're going to stick their cookie on their forehead, okay? They're going to attempt without their hands or their bodies or anything, only their face, to move it from their forehead down to their mouth, right? And minute to minute. And the first one to get it into their mouth is going to be their winner, okay? So you cannot use your hands or anything. <laughs> well, Trish is already losing it. Ready, set, go. If you need it. <laughs> <laughs> ben, Ben. <laughs> ben, Ben, here, come take your prize. Amazing feet. <laughs> He's just got the perfectly shaped head for it. <laughs> so this is a great, great thing to talk about the journey because what do we have with our journey of faith? How does it go? How, talk about your own journey of faith. Is it perfect like Ben's? Sometimes. Sometimes. Most of them we saw, right, the journey of faith, it often, it does not go perfect, right? Our journey of faith is not a straight line, right? We don't just go straight to heaven, do we? We know we have ups, downs, they fall all over the place, they go all over, just like the cookies do, right? It's all over the place. So that's a great one to talk about our faith journey, right? So that's a good one to start if you're talking about the journey of faith or the faith journey, <laughs> as we call it. Okay, we're going to get into a little bit. Um, we're going to go to prayer first before we talk about um, understanding characteristics because I want you guys to do... Um, uh, I want you guys to get to do our prayer stations before lunch. So what are some forms of prayers that you guys like? Lexio Divina. Lexio Divina. Adoration. Adoration, OK. Guided meditation. Guided meditation. Spontaneous. Spontaneous prayer. Anything else? Praise and worship. Praise and worship. I like that. Rosary. Rosary. Great. What does prayer do for us? I guess I put it up here. Prayer does for us. It deepens our relationship with Christ, of course. It helps us to hear the call of God in our lives. Seek God in healing, God's healing grace. It helps us to attain a degree of spiritual renewal. Reminds us of our priorities in life. Keeps us humble and allows for relaxation. So all of those types of prayers really helps to center this part of prayer during our retreat too. So we have the different parts of our retreat. We start with icebreakers and we also have prayer too, okay? So what does prayer help you with? So I want you to take a minute to talk at your tables to talk about what does prayer help you with? Yeah, 
So, this thing goes off all the time. So I wanted to talk about first prayer farms, and then I wanted to ask you guys to really discuss at your groups what prayer helps you with for a specific reason. You know, um, a lot of us love our prayer forms, but a lot of times, sometimes we can run away with um, exposing our children to one specific prayer form because it really helps us. So I just want to warn you a little bit that we need to expose our kids 
to lots of prayer forms because what our prayer form is does not necessarily help us to help them provide what it helps us you know what 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 we're really looking to help them get out of prayer i'm not saying that right so the question was you know how does prayer help you we want to help them get something out of prayer and our prayer forms don't necessarily help them all the time so we need to expose them to multiple types of prayers so that they can get out of prayer what we hope we get out of prayer that help so make sure that when you do retreats you're not necessarily always exposing them to adoration always exposing them to lexio divino always exposing them to the our father we need to make sure that we mix it up that we give them multiple opportunities of all different ways of prayer because what we feel is important does not mean that it's something that they're connecting to so if that makes sense and, you know, the other thing that it helps with is that as they grow in their faith Sometimes, even if I have a preferred form of prayer, there are times in my life of crisis or whatever that that form goes away. Like I need to go back to rote prayer. Yep. I need, to, yeah. you know, I need to say the Hail Mary a thousand times or or whatever. So it gives them sort of a toolkit to, you know, it helps them as when they're young, but then gives them sort of a a kit to move forward. Like if I can draw on these different things that I've learned Absolutely. and practice. So some of the things that I'm going to talk about are a little different than, you know, what we're typically exposed to. So like number one, language. I'm going to show you something a little different. Like how many of us know a different language in here? Who knows a different language? Yeah. What language do you know? Not enough yet. French. French? <laughs> okay. Can you come up here and share with us? How to say uh, the sign, how to do the sign of the cross in French? No. Okay. Great. That's what I'm going to show. Good. No, no, no. no. <laughs> Will you share with us, Mary Jane? Yeah. Do you guys know, do you, any of you remember the Latin? In nomine? Patre, Filia, Spiritu Santa. Amen. I mean, being able to teach the kids in different language. Some of them already at home have the different language. And then to teach the kids, I'll tell you, the younger ones absorb at younger ages different language very easily. So to be able to have them have different languages at this age, to just be able to do the sign of the cross in different languages is great. So... One of the things that I use a lot in my, and I am going to share this, is sign language. Do any of you guys use sign language with songs or with prayers? This is the sign of the cross in sign language. In the, in the name the, of the Father, Father and, the and the Son, and the, and the Holy, Holy Spirit. Spirit. Amen. Amen. Do it. This is Loyola. You can find pretty much online any of these things. So if you want to teach them in Latin, it's online in Latin, how to say it in Latin, how to say it. All you have to do is show it in video. Why do women Sorry. Do menopause gain more yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that. That's probably very important too, right? Yeah. Yeah. That's very relatable, I'm sure. How many of our little kids, I mean, uh, in our little, in our classrooms, I mean, literally, I go around and I jog with my kids, my kindergarten and first graders. Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. I mean, they'll do just about anything, my little ones. They love it, exactly. I mean, you got to think different ways to do things. And you know what? It's so funny because my second graders, 
Some of them go to Catholic school because uh, they're in the Catholic school program, but they come to my religious ed program. So I have my religious ed program in the school. And what do you see? Our father who are in heaven out at the preschool because that's what they learn. They'd rather be, you know, so they're running in the playground singing it. And if we're teaching them by doing different things, an act of prayer, like jogging, shrugging, doing jumping jacks or whatever, they're carrying it over into their schools and stuff like that. But because my school's meeting, what do I see? I see them actually doing it in some of their regular classrooms in their regular environments. So how great, they're carrying it back where they are. So if you integrate some of the language, some of the act of prayer, ritual prayers, prayer tools, and that sort of stuff, you'll actually see them blending it into their environment, the smaller kids. And that rings true for the older kids too. So very, very important. The best tools that I could tell you on prayer is make it interactive for the older kids. Interactive stuff, prayer chains. How many people have heard of prayer chains? Yes, prayer chains are very easy. Um, they can be, I, I wouldn't say, but you can do them online, prayer chains. Uh, how many people use um, technology to text message and that kind of stuff? You can do prayer chains through text messaging um, with parents and young people. So long as their parents are on the thing, you can do prayer chains through text messaging. You can do prayer chains through um, visual, like make Lenten prayer chains, those kind of things, where each person takes a piece of the prayer chain and then they do a part of it. Um, you can do knotted up. How many have heard of knotted up prayer? Where literally uh, everybody, you make a knot for everybody in the classroom and they you know, pray for someone that has, that either needs forgiveness or they want forgiveness from and then they untie the knot. Right? Knot it up. On the other side, we do um, some of the things that we do is we hang a string and they, they knot after they've forgiven someone. So they tie a knot on a prayer forgiveness one too. So you can tie a knot or a bow around it. After they've done reconciliation, they tie a knot too as a sign of forgiveness. So knotted up prayer too. The other thing is you can make a whole service, a whole retreat around prayer. And that's what I've done here today is there is actually a retreat planned for you today. There's actually four different stations planned for you today. Um, and of course, I will share this with you, but there are four stations, and this is based on a psalm. Um, this is based on a psalm. The Lord is my shepherd. Does anybody know? Mm -hmm. Psalm 23. 23. So Psalm 23, and there's four different stations. You could go in order, but you really don't have to, okay? But utilizing this, this can be done for any age, any age. But um, each, I'm not even going to explain the stations. Every station is explained in and of itself. But usually when I've done this, I have a catechist at each one to help explain the kids to the kids that want to go to each station. I do not tell them to go in silence or anything like that. We start with a little opening prayer and then we let them go to each one of the stations to experience it. And the catechists help them read and talk to and do the stations. And that's what I'm gonna let you guys do. I'm gonna let you guys go and experience and do the stations on your own at this time so that you see what it's like for them. Okay, does that sound good? Do you have any questions? I think I have one question on your last line there. Um, use um, prayer tools or add service into your prayer. Oh, that's exactly. a good one. Yeah, yeah. So I have, we've done prayer stations too where we've done service. How often have you gotten a thank you note from one of your kids as a priest? Oh, a far, yeah, but it's, uh, often, yeah. Often? You have? That's great. Why not make a station for a priest to write a thank you note to a priest? Why not make a, a station to um, write to one of the shut-ins from your, your um, parish? Why not make a station to write a card if it's uh, Thanksgiving, if it's uh, Christmas, if it's Valentine's to um, one of the homeless shelters? Why not do a station uh, to um, 
do a nursing home uh, doorknob um, craft for all of the people that are in the nursing home. You know, all of these, every service thing does not have to always be going out, especially if there's people that can't necessarily go out, the younger kids. There's always something you can go in and do. You can do something inside. You just need to think outside of the box of how service can be done. Thanks for asking that question. Oh, thank you. That, yeah. That's great. Yeah. Service members, you know, if you have service members, we used to have a list of service people that we prayed for. We used to write letters to service people. My middle school and high schoolers used to write letters to our service people during retreats, too. So, all right. Does anybody know of Kairos Ministry, Prison Ministry? Yeah. yeah. They, little kids can make placemats. Yeah. Just decorate them, flowers, whatever, and they take them in yeah. on the weekends, and uh, the guys... I know mostly the guys program, but they take them in and they use the placemats and they have these things decorated by children. I'm thinking of you, praying for you or whatever, or just smiley faces or whatever. So easy, they could do that at a table with just crayons and a blank placemat that you can buy by the thousands at DJ. You know, yeah. just plain white. <laughs> yep. 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 So please take time to go to each one of the stations and then come and sit back down and we'll talk about the experience, okay? Nope, order. nope, no order. Okay. It's not necessary. So, as a quick aside about formed prayer, because I like to introduce every kind of prayer to the kids, but my previous um, background was a nurse, and I'd been working on a physical rehab unit 18, and we had a team of nurses. You could sign up when you came in and ask for nurses, and we prayed with you. So it was interdenominational. It was really great. This was 30 years ago. So I was working... Um, the third shift, second shift women, and we'd had this young man, he was only 44 and he'd had a stroke, mm -hmm. and we hadn't been able to figure out how to communicate with him. And so we had this one little nurse from Canada, Pauline, who spoke French, and when she was washing him up for the evening, she was praying in French over him as she washed him, and boom, it still gives me goosebumps. Mm -hmm. Boom, he started praying in French. His first language was French. He'd come from Canada. Makes me cry still. Oh, wow. And he'd been in the hospital for like two months. We just could not figure out that key to the, right. to yeah. the stroke victim. She screams and she comes <laughs> running down the Oh my God, oh my God, Kevin's talking. Oh. And, so, and boom, we, they could communicate with him. So that importance wow. of, like you say, in, that, in a real time of trouble, when you're lost for words and it comes to you automatically. Yeah. So he started the Our Father and it was just, I've never forgotten. Yeah. And yeah. it's like learning your times tables. Mm -hmm. Those things that are important to memorize, yep. though extemporaneous stuff is great, everything's great, but it's there's a purpose. It's good to have a little bag of uh, yeah. Yeah. yeah, and I use that example with parents all the time because yep. it just was so strong. You yeah. Know? It's great. That's yeah. cool. Yeah. What a good, a story. good story. Yeah. yeah. And it really made the difference. Yeah. Sure. Oh, yeah. my gosh. Yeah. This, this one keeps shutting off. I don't automatically know. I, know I don't know what it is yeah it doesn't seem to have any rhyme or reason to it yeah <laughs> not the battery I don't think it's not working well it keeps shutting off I don't know we don't know why it just kind of shuts off by itself Could be the battery. Could be the battery. It is the battery. Uh. I got I got another one. It's 
theirs, though. It's not yours. It's theirs. Yeah, I know. Okay. We're shredding our worries. Did you bring it? Yes. But I like the correlation between the math and the real faces. Green. Not red. Look at that. That's what it is. Almost always the battery. <laughs> All right, I'm going to shut it off for now. So I don't chit chat over everybody while they're re retreating. So far so good. Mm. No, I'm good. Yep, right right on the map. That was amazing. It really was. <laughs> so we have a lot of ways we can do it. How many have used skits? Skits. Yeah, right? Skits. There are lots of different places you can get skits online everywhere you can get skits, or you can develop your own. If you come up with a different theme, I come up with, um, there's tons of them that I've used. I mean, even going back to, you know, explain the Trinity or the Holy Spirit. I mean, I've made up my own, you know, going into like the Holy Ghost and being like, woo. And I'm like, who's the Holy Ghost? What do you mean? And being like making up fun and then, no, it's the Holy Spirit, you know, yay, Holy Spirit. Woo, it's a ghost. No, it's the Holy Spirit. You know, just fun little gimmicks, you know. So, um, Skits are awesome and fun ways to do it, especially if you can get your older kids involved to do skits for your younger kids. That always works. Or if you could even just read something and have your kids act it out, that's a great way to do it too. So the more you can get involved. But I'll tell you what, if you have a group of kids that are barely getting involved, don't plan to try to get them involved into a skit if they're sitting there and you're like, all right, come up here and act it out. Forget it, the biggest ham in the group will come and act it out and it'll be horrible. So don't try to do something if they're not already involved in something. One of my favorite, favorite things too is objective, object, le, object lessons. How many of you have used object lessons? You have? Okay. Does anybody know what an object lesson is? No, no, no. No. So an object lesson is really, really easy. It takes like household things to explain. One of my favorite things is I just uh, was talking to Mary Ellen is my priest cannot speak to little, little kids. He can speak to kids, but little, little kids he can't speak to. So I gave him an object lesson to do with little, little kids at Easter. And uh, I'm sure you've seen or have had object lessons done before, but you take objects and you help to explain a lesson using objects. So um, I gave them a whole bunch of Easter eggs, okay? And we know, what is the idea at Easter? What is the, the lesson we want to portray at Easter? Resurrection. resurrection. And what is resurrection for us? What does it help us? New life. new life, right? New life, resurrection, heaven, right? So I gave them a whole bunch of Easter eggs, and this was my object lesson, okay, that we were going to do, okay? Take a bunch of Easter eggs, I said, and I filled them, okay? And here's what it is. A, little, a teacher was giving a catechism lesson. And her catechism lesson was about Easter. 
Easter is about new life. So the idea was go out into the yard and find some kind of new life. Put it in your egg, close it up, and we'll talk about it when you come back to class. So the teacher went out with all of the kids and they ran out into the yard and they went and found all sorts of things for new life. Interesting thing, it's springtime, springs in the air. So they found all sorts of things. So they came back and they all sat down in the class. First little kid opened up theirs. What do they see? A beautiful little crocus. Well, that's a beautiful sign of spring. Our first flower, right? Beautiful sign of spring. That is new life, the teacher said. Next one, she opened up a blade, the first blade of grass. Finally, some green in the air, she said. That's right, a beautiful new blade of grass. God gave us green. That is good, she, she said. Thank you very much. She opened the next egg. And there was a twig with a bud on it. Oh yes, we're finally gonna have leaves again. That's a definite sign of new life. She opened the next one and it was empty. Someone forgot to get a sign of new life. Hey, who forgot to fill this egg? Someone forgot to fill the egg. Um, Johnny said, I forgot to, I didn't forget to fill the egg. I didn't forget to fill the egg, teacher. She goes, what? We were supposed to find signs of new life. But you understand, the tomb was empty. What? Yes, my egg is empty because the sign of new life was that Jesus rose from the dead so we could have new life. Right? That's an object lesson. My, my priest messed it all up, put stickers inside and da 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 and uh, said, this is what we get at Easter, but that's not the real meaning. Da 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 da. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so we use real things and we do. So I have another one for you on forgiveness. Would you like to see it in action? Yeah, okay. And there's great places to go, but I will tell you, most of them are not Catholic. But it doesn't mean that they can't be used. We have to use our noggin to change them so that they're from the perspective of the Catholic theology and doctrine. Okay? I will give you places that you can go that you can get these objective lessons for free. But then you have to really read them, think about them, do them, and then do them from the perspective of... What does our faith say about them? Some of them you, you could use right away, you know? Okay, so, you know, God came and he gave his son. What is the most important thing or reason why he gave his son to us? Does anybody know? Salvation. Salvation from sin. sin. That's right. He gave his son for salvation from our sin. But unfortunately, there are things that keep us from truly experiencing God's love and salvation, which is sin. What are those things that we might do once in a while that keeps us from God's sin? Those sinful things that keep us from God, that separate us from God's love. What are those things? Lie. Lie. <laughs> Lie. Yeah. What? Gossip. Gossip. Gossip my parents. Not listen. <laughs> Steal. <laughs> cheat. I'm just going to put cheat. Anything else? What? <laughs> Vandalize. <laughs> Make fun. Make fun. Bully. Bully. Anything else? Lazy. Lazy. Oh gosh. Judgmental or laziness. Judge. Skipping school. Skipping school. Missing, missing math. No, it's not 
So we have, we have something in our religion that helps us to let go of all these sins. What is it called? Reconciliation. That's right. But what did Jesus do for us that allowed us to have this sacrament of reconciliation? Died. Up here I have a symbol of Jesus' death. This is lovely. You could come up and look at it if you'd like, but it's the blood of Christ, i.e. food coloring and water for you guys. But I have all my kids that come up and they look, whoa, the blood of Christ this year. A symbol of the blood of Christ because he gave it up for us so that we could be freed from all this sin. I would recommend putting this in pencil, but I don't have a pencil. So I'm going to show you how we get rid of sin by that sacrament of reconciliation by putting it into the blood of Christ. So you want to come up and see what it says? Ooh. Or someone want to come up and see what it says on my, my sheet that's falling apart? Sorry, you want to come? Oh, wait a minute. Do you see it? Yeah, forgiven. Forgive. It's forgiven. Over. Forgiven in white. It's over. Yeah. So if you can want to come up, you can actually see. I don't want to hold it too much. Oh. Do you see it? That's so cool. Thank you. White crayon. And actually, if you do it multiple times, it really stands oh, out. Yeah. But I had someone do it for me. Regular paper. So if you literally take a crayon and you write multiple times, I should have told Mary Ellen to write multiple times, so you draw it really nice and thick. Yep. You can write whatever you want when you dip it in. You could write forgiven, forgiveness, or reconciliation, or whatever. Forgiven by God's love. You dip it in, and that stays white while the, the paper turns pink. So. so you write the sins in pencil. Yeah, or pen. You can keep pen. it in pen because the whole thing will. But I, I usually do it in pencil because and then, then the write, white stands out. Or prior to that, you write forgiven or forgiveness in a crayon. Mm -hmm. but they haven't, the kids haven't seen that. Written. They haven't seen okay. it either. Yeah, white, white yep. crayon. I think we need to see in the wax. Yeah. Okay. Would you like to hear another one or are you over them? No, another one. Yes. Yes? Well, well, all right. I know, Trish, I'll give you another one, but does everybody else want to hear one more? Yeah. Or are you over them? No, yes? No. Okay. One more. All right. So imagine I have a box here. Okay. Actually, why don't I have two volunteers from this, but I'm going to tell you. We're going to have an imagination. Two volunteers for my imaginary one. Thank you. Bring, your, bring a chair, too, with you. Yeah. In my box, I have something that will, you're going to pretend you're a third grader. I can do that. In my box, I have a gift for you. No, you're going to be an adult. You're not. Sorry. In my box, I have something that will, that I could give you that would do your homework. Would you like that? Okay. Okay. 
in my box, I have something that could possibly offer you the start to world peace. Would you like that? Or would you prefer something else? Let me think okay. of something else. I'd like, like something that will do my homework. Uh, okay. No, I'll take world peace. That's good. You'll take world peace? OK. This box could be amazing. This box could do anything. Would you guys believe it if I told you this with my red fingers? Would you guys believe that I actually had a box that could do his homework with something in it that could do his, his third grade homework? Would you believe it? No. 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 Would you believe that there's something that could start the process of world peace? <laughs> Would you believe that I could have something like this? You would believe that I had something in this box, like something that I could give to her and would start world peace and do his homework at the same time. Oh, at the same time? Yeah. No. No? No. So most of you would not believe that whatever that was in this box could neither do his homework nor, nor at the same time, nor bring about world peace, the start of world peace, right? Probably not, because you'd think I was crazy. Or it'd be some kind of gimmick or you know, something like what I just did in that objective lesson, like something kind of crazy, OK? So there's probably not a lot we could do in order to get homework done and bring about world peace unless it was some kind of crazy something <laughs> that happened here. But what do you think if I gave a peek to this third grader, if he would answer yes or no if it would help? What do you think he would answer if I gave him a peek? Would he say yes or no? Did he want to peek you? Yeah. No, if he peeked in, would he answer yes, it could do his homework, or no, it would not? No, 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 not if he could tell. Would he say yes, it would be able to do his mirror? Yeah, he'd probably say no, right? And if I showed her what's in the box, would she be able to say, she would say yes or no, it could begin the process. I know what it is. Okay, all right, I bet she does. Okay, I'm going to show you what's in the box, okay? And you did tell me whether or not it can do your, your homework. Could that do your homework? <laughs> I want you to look again. <laughs> that thing is high. Could that do it? Yes. Ah, true, right there. That is a true third grader. <laughs> All right. Now, Miss Mary Jane, I want yes, you to Ms. look Maggie. inside my box and tell me. <laughs> Would that be able to do the beginning of world peace? Yes. Yes. So they have both found that this box could do their homework and could begin the process of world peace. So I've discounted everything you said. So do you guys have an idea of this wonderful, unbelievable box, what it could be? You know. Do you know? What? Mirror. It's a mirror because it's you. You can do your homework and you can begin the process of world peace. Everything begins with you. Your love for God, your peace. Give it up for my third grader, Mary Jane. Thank you, thank you. That's what object lessons do. So why are they so great? They're easy, easy to put together. They're everyday items. They can work for all levels. And they really put these simple, 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 you know, lessons on a very interesting level. So it doesn't matter. I know you're working with college age. Doesn't matter. You know, my, um, my priest did that one um, on a Sunday mass with a mirror. 
Of course, he called it a magic box, which oh, the people that knew like it was like, oh, don't call it a magic box. But anyways, he got a round of applause from the whole community, standing round of applause after he did that one, because it related whether you were this big, <laughs> this big or this old, it didn't matter. Everybody understood that homily because they could relate to the image of, of yourself being able to be the beginning of something and the end of something. So we know that people are visual learners and people get that. When we understand, when we see things, we can connect to them very well. So try to use these, try to see them, and try to get them because they're a great way to get across lesson plans, okay? So the next idea is there's more, even more interesting things about why they should do it. They pique curiosity. Didn't you definitely want to know what is in that box? What's in that box? And all of you didn't have a clue. What's in that box? What's in that box? And even some of you had to come up and see what was written on that, the, the thing. Like, how did you do that? What's on there? Okay. Even Old Testament prophets and Jesus used these type of lessons. Do you remember that? Yeah, they use these kind of lessons. We're not the only ones to use them, so use them too, okay? So what are the other ones? We share faith. Isn't that a great way? I've already heard some of your faith stories today. They've been awesome, okay? So some of the best ways that we can, okay. I forgot I put all of these funny little cartoons. Some of the best ways that we can inevitably connect with our kids is to share our own faith story. And um, they want to know that we're just as much human as they are. So I thought I would share some of my faith stories too, which is kind of funny. I, you, know, you know I grew up in New Hampshire, but I also grew up in Rhode Island. I actually lived on an island in Rhode Island. A lot of people think Rhode Island is an island, but it's not. But I actually lived on an island, and where I grew up was a lot like where I grew up in Potter Place, because it was in the middle of nowhere. We had to cross bridges. We only had like a gas station, a small market, um, a gas station and a small market. That would be about it on Jamestown. So. Um, you know, those, those things that you do as kids, there wasn't a lot to do. I mean, we still got to play outside and do all the fun things, but you know, the foods that you loved, a lot of us talked about foods and our icebreakers. As a kid, one of those fast food places that you always love to go is with those golden arches is? McDonald's. Thank you, McDonald's. Okay. so. For us to go to McDonald's was like going to the Holy Land for us now, okay? It really was. It was like over hills, over dales, over everything. I mean, it was like, you know, if you listen to my mom talk about going off the island, it was like we, we were traveling to the Holy Land. You might as well have taken a ship, a camel, and, you know, it was just an immense travel. It literally took forever. So if you were taking a trip like this, you know, even in, in Potter Place when we lived there, you know, the market was down the road, so you got a couple things. But when you had to really shop, and I don't know if some of you are like this, you had to do like extra things for the day. So if me and my brother were told that we're going to McDonald's, it was not like we were going to McDonald's just to go to McDonald's. It was we were going to McDonald's to do the chores for the whole house for the next month. <laughs> and our surprise was we're at the end going to get McDonald's, OK? So. As a kid, when you were getting McDonald's, how did that make you feel? Just imagine your third grade self. McDonald's, how would you feel? <laughs> yes, McDonald's! You know, did you ever see the Eddie Murphy special? Probably not because you would never hear that. I'm getting McDonald's, I'm getting McDonald's. That's all I could think of, you know? Like, that's, as kids, that's all you could think of, all right? 
but we also knew that we had to go to the store, we had to go to the hardware store, we had to go to every place that you could imagine for everything. But what would happen if you didn't do things, you know, be properly behave, you didn't, get, yeah, that's right. So you were on your best behavior, you acted right, you went to the right places, you did the things you had to do, and then you got your oh. And what would you buy at McDonald's? Happy meal. Happy meal. <laughs> oh. And what was in there? A toy. But you know, you probably scarf down your food in about two minutes. And then you know you played with your toy for about three minutes. And then inevitably, you know your toy breaked in about four minutes because they were mostly made of plastic. Now, the, the thing, the reason I bring this up is because when I finally had an encounter with Christ, I realized that this was not my happy meal. <laughs> well, what's the happiest meal on earth that we have? Eucharist. Eucharist, that's right. And I realized that I have to be as excited about the Eucharist as I am about this little box, right? This, this little box is not as important as the Eucharist. So I also know that there are things that I had to do to prepare in order to receive Eucharist, just like I did when I was a kid. There are things, there are levels that we go through, there are religious ed. What else do we do to prepare to have this happiest meal on earth? Reconciliation. 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 We go to religious ed. What else do we do? Fast. We fast. We go to retreat. What else do we do to prepare? Practice. Practice. We go to mass. We go to not receive. We go to mass every week. That's right. And then, do you see the happiest children on earth when they receive? Every week, we need to be the happiest children on earth. And that's what I learned. Like, every week, I am the happiest child on earth to receive the happiest meal that we can have every single week, right? Yep. Mm -hmm. So every week I go there with a smile on my face knowing that this isn't the happy meal. The happy meal I get is every single week at church because God gave it to me so I could have eternal life. So I hope you liked my faith story and I hope you now will take some time to share your faith stories at your table. Does anybody need more time? Yes. Does anybody want to share? Good. Does anybody want to share? Ben, you wanted to share? I can just wash my hands. I'm teasing. I saw you catch that one. Oh, I thought you wanted to share too. If anybody would like to share, they're welcome to. I know face stories are personal, but the best thing is to make sure that they're relatable so that your kids can get in touch with who you are and who you're about. I'll tell you one of the things I also, 
I've done everything in the world. I've taught high school theology too. And one of the best things that I did, and this is great for middle school and high school too, is I literally told them a story of a Christmas present that I got from my sister-in-law. Uh, it was a set of cutlery and she went out and bought it. She knew I had gotten it for her for Christmas, but then she went out and bought her own. And I said how disastrous it was and how upset I was. And I'm like, should I just stuff it and give it to her? I didn't care. I was so mad. Should I return it and do the right thing? Or should I just write a note and say, sorry, you know, I got this for you. You knew I got it for you. What should I do? And I let them get in groups and decide for me what to do. <laughs> and that was great. They're like, all right. Take your Catholic tradition, take your morals and values, and put it to work and tell me what to do. <laughs> and they did. They, <laughs> they were like, they thought that was the best story I ever told them because they were like, that's real, that's in the moment, that's all about you. And they like, they felt like, hey, I was sharing, that was who I was, that was like, you know, emotional, and that was like, all right. This is what you should do, Miss Roach. We understand this, but you're going to return it, but you're going to write a note saying that's what you had done. And, da, 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 da. and I'm like, all right, guys, thank you. Thank you for justifying my emotions, too. And they took a whole class on it, and they really, you know, they talked about Jesus in it and all that. But that was connection because they connected to who I was, they understood who I was, they took into the account the morality, everything they had learned. It was one of the best classes I had because I connected to them, I let them have it, I let them solve it, and they also took, you know, their own faith in everything that they learned. So don't underestimate who these kids are and what they're learning from you. Give them some of your real life, give them some of your emotions, let them deal and grapple with it too because surprise you so yeah I'll, I'll share one okay it's, it surprised me right yes. oh can i come up yes one? please <laughs> share it surprised me because at the time i was working with high schoolers i was teaching with somebody who was traveling this was back when this is years and years ago when we could teach in homes mm -hmm. so we were teaching at this gentleman's home. His wife was home, but he got delayed on business, and she said he's not gonna make it in time for tonight. And he was the one that was doing the lesson. And I had a half an hour to come up with a lesson. And all I could think of, because I quilt, was to grab six mm -hmm. of my quilts that there are lessons in. So I brought the six quilts. I shared with the kids about how you make a quilt, what's in it, how the stitches are so much like what's in our life when we practice it, when we come to church, when we pray, when we read the scriptures. Those are all like a stitch that gives that quilt stability. So, and that's just one of the quilts. There were six stories and six quilts and what was going on in my life. And that's what I did for the night. And I was amazed because they were all like quiet. They were peaceful, not comatose. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Interested in we <laughs> listening. When we got to the end of that year and we asked for an evaluation and what lesson they enjoyed the most in the course of the year, both the boys and the girls loved what I taught in the quilts. Mm -hmm. And it just, it shocked me, but there are so many spiritual aspects <coughs> of even the hobbies and the things that we do. And I was able to turn it into that object lesson that you talked about and I'm thinking, I was winning it, but it was the Holy Spirit leading me, and it was the most memorable lesson for the whole class. Yay. Great. And at the end of the class, they made me a quilt. <laughs> ah, that's that great. in my office, That's actually. awesome. The class did, yeah. Does someone back there have something to share? I just was, I just was wondering if you actually took their advice. Yes, <laughs> absolutely. Right. And did they follow up? I did. Oh, are you kidding? They wanted to know every little bit about my life. Any interest. I mean, it's, it's weird being a teacher because they want to know anything outside of the classroom that, that they can get any little bit. I mean, they even like, oh my gosh, Ms. Roach, I saw you drive down the street in X, Y, and Z car. I'm like, 
yeah, that's me. That's my car. Like, like anything. They're just like fascinated by like. Yeah, yeah, pretty much. They think like so. Like having that following up, you know, everything. Like, woo, yeah. So your kids, they want to know you have a life, and they don't want to. They really think that we are sitting there with our hands prayed, tied together, praying every on our knees every day at mass. A lot of times, they really do. They think we're like the, the sentimental, you know, perfect church lady, you know. Isn't that nice, you know? So, I mean, they really do. They just, they think that we're a lot of times unrelatable if we're not sharing enough of our lives. So, yeah. So, anybody else? I think sometimes they just want to know what you really believe. You know, and not without any frills or whatever. And I was teaching a morality class, sophomores in high school which is an impossible task, by the way. Um, <laughs> yeah. And we had a case book, you know, that we would go through. And they had to, like, figure out their own questions. This is the situation. Here's the case. Hmm? Can I do my foot line? Yeah, like, yeah, this is the case, so you, you want to talk about it. So it was about, um, it was about killing, basically. So they said, well, Miss Sylvia, like, what do you think? Yeah, don't you think there's times that it's justified to kill someone? And I said, you want to know what I really believe? Yes, Miss Sylvia. I said, no, I don't. They said, well, what if, and then, you know, and, and then I said, no. Well, what if, and they're going on and on, throwing all these what ifs at me, right? And so finally, one, one young man said, what if somebody broke into your house and they had a gun and they were going to shoot your mother? Wouldn't you shoot them? <clears throat> I said, no. What do you mean, no, you wouldn't shoot them if they were going to shoot your mother? I said, no, you can't be sure about that. I said, yes, I can. I don't own a gun. <laughs> <laughs> but I was trying to help them to understand that all of their decisions shouldn't happen in the moment. Like when you're in the back seat of the car with your boyfriend or your girlfriend, right? That shouldn't be the first time this comes to your mind. <laughs> You should be thinking about these things, talking about this stuff. Like in this class, I said, we're talking about this so you have time to process what you really believe. So I believe I shouldn't kill anyone no matter what, then I shouldn't have a weapon. I make a decision before I have to decide to shoot it that I don't own it. So it was just, and it was a pretty simple thing, and I didn't know, I didn't plan that part of the lesson. Those are the kinds you don't know, because they start, this, you know, like, you know, I have 25 sophomores in high school, going, but what if, but what if, mm -hmm. you know? And so I just think you have to be mm -hmm. totally honest with them. I mean, and I don't mean overshare honest, because that's a problem. Mm -hmm. I think some people overshare with kids, you know? But to be authentic, I think that's, that's the key to really helping them. So that's just my little, mm -hmm. Uh, that comes to mind. That story comes to mind to me a lot because of it was it was impactful, really. And some of them they keep in touch. A lot of them they remember, like they remember that, you know. Mm -hmm. Yeah, remember you told you didn't own a gun. Well, you couldn't shoot. It. <laughs> so here are some things that we can do to help make our teaching stick. Okay, number one, keep it simple. The simpler, the better. You know, keeping comp sets really, really easy. I want to show you a little uh, video, which I think is great. How many of us uh, use um, the lost sheep for reconciliation, right? The lost sheep, a lot of us use that. I found a video that I just think is priceless for the lost sheep. Of course, it's not up here. Has anybody seen this one before? And this is another thing. It says Southern Adventist, but review it, watch it. You can't beat this. <coughs>
Simple, right? Simple. No words, no nothing, but how easy is it now to explain the parable of the lost sheep? Because a lot of us are visual learners versus reading that scripture. My kids, how many of you, like once your priest is doing reconciliation, if you have a short liturgy of the word, how many of them want to go down and be like, so who is, what happened in this story? Uh, what, what, where did the sheep go? Uh, you know, they love to ask questions of the kids. Well, I'll tell you what, my kids, my kids are like, oh, the, the, but then they'll be like, then the sheep fell off the cliff. <laughs> I'm like, <laughs> in the story, <laughs> but, but they know, they know Jesus is the shepherd. They know the lost sheep is us. And we do a little thing. We make our own sheep. So we decorate them as ourselves and they bring that up to reconciliation with their sin on back. And then they get a sticker that covers it because it says forgiven by a God's love. I mean, they do a whole thing. But, you know, when we do little videos that are really simple and, you know, exact, these are things that are really, really important. So, simple. Unexpected. We talked about unexpected. Sorry, go ahead. I just, this is really good. What I've been doing for the last few years is with the parents and the kids, I ask how many kids have ever been lost, and most of them raise their hand. So I say, so when you got lost at the mall with your parents, did your parents say, well, you know, he's been kind of naughty for a while. Let's not bother looking for him. <laughs> or if you have brothers and sisters, do your parents say, well, you know, we got two more. We do have two more at home, and they are a lot less trouble, so let's just go. And like, he no, no. I said, when your parents lose you, they race around. And I acted out and I raced around the room saying, have you seen my child? Have you seen my child? And it really hits home. But this is really good. Yeah, yeah. Um, so we also need to do unexpected, like our, um, we were doing object uh, lessons. Um, and concrete examples. One of the things that I do with sacraments too is we do mock sacraments. I know, you know, we baptize a baby doll. How many of you go walk through or marry, you know, two people, you know, two of my kids? My kids are always up for getting married. They think it's hilarious once I get it to middle school and high school. I mean, they, some of them will not do it at certain ages and then they're dying to do it at certain ages. So we walk through the ceremonies you know, so that they know. Some of them have never been to a baptism, never been to a wedding. So to see that, like literally mocking the wedding and actually doing them and giving them the vows and giving them the baptism and stuff like that, that's really powerful to them because they haven't been to these things. They don't get to get invited to baptisms and weddings at times. So those are really not only concrete, incredible, things you know emotional we talked about those sharing faith times this emotional and stories those are ways to connect emotionally and with our own stories okay so the next section is really the sticking things like what else can we do you know some of the things that we did this morning are like crafts and games and worksheets and color sheets and all of those things well i have some fun for you so um, in your folder, you actually have a QR scavenger hunt. This is great for any age that starts having phones. Oh, sorry, Mary Jane. I'll talk about something else while we go. Um, if you have an Apple phone, it'll automatically read these. But if you don't, you're probably going to have to download in the Play Store, if you go to your Play Store, a free QR code reader. Has anybody used QR codes in ministry? Business, great. Anybody use QR codes here? They are the best. You can use them for anything, scavenger hunts, finding things, anything, you know, just getting them to integrate into their lessons. This is the most fun thing. You need to use them. You don't even need Wi-Fi. 
They can just simply use their phone. So this I did because we don't have to leave our space and stuff. Mary Jane's going to get, I actually downloaded uh, one of the uh, bulletins from this area. So I have used these to do quizzes, you know, like, you know, I number them one through a hundred and post them all up all over the place. And then you go one through a hundred, you go all around the room and you answer as many questions as you can. Yep. Uh, go to your picture, your picture app, and then it should just scan. It's not happening? Yeah. Oh, oh, it happened. Yeah, how do we do it? Okay, no, you have to go to taking a picture. Yeah. Oh, yeah, and then go over it. Oh, no, you're not in an iPhone. Only iPhone. This is an iPhone. It is? Yeah. Okay. So what, what am I doing wrong? You're in an iPhone? I yeah. thought yours is... No, mine's an iPhone, so what am I doing wrong? All right. This is I motion am. at your garage door. Oh, that's... I have rain. That's not doing it, huh? Yeah. And it is an iPhone? Yeah, definitely. Okay, then download a QR oh, okay. reader, have... because I don't know why yours is not. Yeah. Zoom in. Okay. And yours is an iPhone, too? Yeah, 10. Yes. QR reader? Do you have a QR reader? So you can get your answers now. So here's the bulletin that it goes with so you can get your answers. So you can do this with a bulletin, you can do this for Stations of the Cross, you can do this as quizzes. All you do is you go on your computer, you can go, you know, and make your own. Okay, I got it. It's game on. So you're tasked with answering the five questions on this. The scan me tells you what to do, and then the first one on start. You can do it on Android. You have to load, go to the app store and load the free scanning thing, which I don't know how to do, and I'm not going to do. Yeah, okay. You know what the, the actual yeah. budget oh, okay. was. Is there you another one? Share them, she said. Oh, How do you know what the actual budget was? You have to find. You want me to tell you? <laughs> so I get this. Okay. So that's my question. Yep. And then it gives you the questions. You and then scan I put them all. You scan it and it gives you the questions. Yeah. Scan to get the questions. Yeah. So you're not even getting the full question. Because you're um, not getting the full. See, Deacon was talking about doing a scavenger hunt for our walk-in as it would go for a retreat. Is that high school? I'm so confused. So scan it again for me. Can you see the whole thing? perfectly. Yeah. Easy, easy. You can go on your regular computer and you just uh, QR code uh, generator and they're free to do. QR code, code generator. This is our table's answer. Do you have all the things? Let me check your answers. Do you have confession now? Yeah. Yep. QR code, ready? Andy, it's, well, wedding if I was invited. No, I wasn't. <laughs> So do you have to bring it up? Really? <laughs> we were we were invited. What? I don't have that. I'm, I'm a little hurt now. That she was invited and we weren't. We were invited at the table. Oh, okay. Now I'm happy. I have different ones. You do? Yeah, I have we different. Were we were. Now yeah, I have that confession. wedding. Those are also on there. So, oh, oh, wow, so here it is. The difference in June of actual... No, no, nope, that's not what I have. Number one, I have a different answer. Number two, I have a different answer. Before we move on, if you want to make these, all you do is go onto your computer, 
you go onto the World Wide Web and it's QR code generator. And just go to a free one. There's a million free ones out there. And what you'll do is you'll just type in your text. You can even put, uh, you can put websites in there. You can put graphics in there. You can put anything in there. Like I said, newer Apple phones will automatically read them, but they just need to download. Like, so before retreat, you might just say, please have your child download a QR code reader, a free QR code reader. But I mean, that took you guys two seconds. You know, some of the things that I've done that they've had to download takes forever and it takes forever during a retreat. So, you know, sometimes I send, if they need a program like a QR code generator, I'll send that in the, so that they do that ahead of time. So QR code generator is what they do. QR code reader is what they need to do it. But like I said, a lot of iPhones will automatically do that and automatically have that. Does anybody have any questions about this? You can use it a million ways. If you have questions on how to do this or you want to do this specifically for some reason, you can feel free to contact me anytime about that, OK? All right, the last thing ooh, that I have for you to do is how many of you seen these red, red yarn bracelets being worn by celebrities, people all over? Oh, yeah. Like, yeah, OK. Mary Jane and Mary Ellen said, I, I haven't seen these anywhere. Like, yeah, some people see them and some people don't. But they are everywhere. And, and you will even see some of the teens getting into it. But they really have no clue what they mean. Does anybody understand what these are about? No, what do they call? no right? Nobody has cool. They're, they're, they, if you ask, they say, it's a spiritual thing. It's a spiritual thing. And you're like, what? We, what kind of spirituality is this? Well, I would love you to clear it up with them. Tell them, oh yeah, it's a Jewish spirituality and it will help you um, with pregnancy. <laughs> so tell them that. It's seriously, I'm not kidding. Pregnancy. To get pregnant or not. To get pregnant. Yeah, so go, this is a great thing. You keep wearing that. <laughs> Actually, it relate. It does. It does. There are two things. It is. It's no. It's related back to Jewish heritage. There are two things that it's done for, and Jewish heritage is also our heritage. So number one, it is related back to pregnancy. It is worn by women and it is carried by men, but women it is to enhance and help with pregnancy, and number two, it's also to ward off the evil eye. So that's what it is. But the real reason is, is because they say um, they wrapped around the temple seven times. And it is, uh, an, um, it is to remember that. And Deborah, um, because of her beauty, her wisdom, and her knowledge, it is in remembrance of her and her wisdom. So it is for. Uh, remembrance of her, so they sell them often by the Wailing Wall um, in remembrance of her, but also for pregnancy for women and to ward off the evil eye for men. So that's what it's about. But today we're going to change this because they love to say, oh, it's for spirituality. You go like, yeah, for women and men who are wanting to get pregnant and for the evil eye. But we're going to change that up today. So in front of you, our, our craft is going to make this into a Catholic spiritual um, uh, bracelet instead of just a spirituality thing. So one of our favorite things are icons. And we do icons all over the place. So we're going to make this spiritual bracelet into an icon. Um, with the little square, you're going to take your tinfoil and wrap it around. Wrap it around it. Arts and crafts, right? I know. I used the foil from the candy bar. No. 
And sometimes if you crease the board ahead of time, like if you want to make a cross or if you want to make certain things, you can crease the board or something like that if you're interested. But then whatever you do, you use the, the markers, the, you have to use on um, tinfoil, you must use specifically the Sharpies. You can't oh, use yeah. washable. Permanent markers. So you mark it how you wish. If you want to use a saint's name or specific icons or a cross, you can draw as you will. But before you draw, I would highly recommend you put your hole in first. Okay? So you don't do that. Because you're going to punch a hole and then you're going to put it through your bracelet and then, yeah. With what shall we punch it, dear Liza? Oh, your Liza, the oh, Liza, oh, your hole punch. Oh. How do you get your tin the one that Sue to has? Stay? Just put it right Sarah? in the corner. You might need a bigger middle. one. Where would it go? Wherever you would like it to be. Do we have it? I think we just might need a bigger one. Is that not big enough? <laughs> no, really. Is one of these bigger? Oh, no, the corner's not even. Here, take another one. Lisa, Add it to. Why did you say these spirituality things were that people were calling these? Oh, I never heard of them until today. There's not a specific name to them. Oh. No, it's just a Jewish tradition. Uh, let me see if I have it. Time, so I am going to turn it over to Mary Jane. But one last service announcement. St. Mary's Press has some great family stuff. I would highly, if you're not using any St. Mary's Press stuff, they have um, some great um, uh, family program stuff, like even stuff, you know, that you could use on retreat. So I would call Maureen Prevention, which she is St. Mary's for this region, and just ask for a sample of one of the grade levels. So if you want to do middle school, ask for like a sixth grade book. If you want, you know, younger kids, ask for a, seventh, a second grade book or something, because that'll have a lot of crafts, a lot of stuff in it, and ask for their discovery curriculum because they have great they came out with a magazine too it's three for nineteen dollars this has great stuff that you could you know you didn't hear it from me copy and give to parents but there is some great stuff too um, you know like for your classroom here that they they want you to copy too um, you know like they, they have people bingo they have things that you know, for coloring in your kids. Copying so this is for you. In the sin pan. Yeah. <laughs> but I mean, the, if you order this, you're allowed to copy it. So Maureen Preventia, she, um, if you talk to any of your diocesan people, they will give you her number. But St. Mary's Press has great stuff. They will send you um, samples for you to preview. But uh, Discovery has great stuff. They have wonderful things. So I would highly recommend you try some of their stuff because, you know, if you want crafts, if you want food, if you want things, there's stuff in there. Thank you very much for having me today. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. We have some announcements. But before that, I just want to thank Liza again for thank being you. with us today. I'm sure you can see she's got a lot of energy, a lot of ideas. You can email her at the Norwich Diocesan office. Um, if you need a specific email, you can contact me. But I think it was, it was clear uh, to everybody today that she's got tons of ideas and a deep faith and love for Jesus. So thank you, Liza. For thank you, Mary Jane. Thank you.